he joined the Navy. He's from, uh, where is he from? He's from Illinois. And uh, his dad went to uh, Illinois State, and he moved um, up to Michigan to get a job after he graduated with a degree in ceramics, All right? And uh, he had a couple of kids, Linda and Jerry, and uh, my dad decided to go in the Navy right out of high school. And uh, interestingly enough, I ordered his records from the Department of the Navy after he passed away and found out he, he got gonorrhea his first short leave in New York. All right, I think that's pretty funny. <laughs> Yeah, you know, something you never would have said, right? Hey, son, guess what? Don't ever do this. Anyway, fast forward, he met my mom. Uh, they had a had four boys, and uh, you know, you know, basically after they got divorced, um, Kent came into the picture. That's Kent's dad over there. And he was in the army. Uh, very angry man. Didn't like mustard very much. And uh, that was a funny story. It was. Why don't you tell that story again? No, nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> anyway, um, so. You know, I grew up on a farm out in the middle of nowhere, north of Detroit, and uh, ended up going in the service myself. That's a young me right there. And uh, mostly I went in because I like to eat food. And so I got three squares a day, and I needed some mentorship, and I ran into uh, various people that took care of me, like that guy right there, Captain William Fugia. Uh, interestingly enough, he wrote a letter to my mom when I was there after about a year, telling her what a great troop I was. Right, which I thought was an interesting touch for a leader that really could have not given a shit, right? Anyway, so I, I learned a lot about being part of a community. Matter of fact, there's my community of people right there, commando flight. And, um, you know, there's people in there, that, they're from Grand Rapids, and they're from Kentucky, and they're from Tennessee, and they're from North Carolina. Ronnie Lee Chestnut from North Carolina, my first roommate. And, uh, you know, they become brothers, right? You know that whole thing about band of brothers? It's really true, you know, when you're in the service. So, uh, anyway, Captain Fusion decided that, he didn't decide, he volunteered for the Air Force Center Guard, got accepted, and they asked him to see if any troops wanted to come with him, and he, he asked me if I wanted to go. I was the only one in the squadron, he asked. So, I put in my special duty package, and I went off to, call, I went off to uh, get my pictures taken and everything, and then, went to Washington, D.C., and he had diverted to SAC headquarters and never worked with him again, all right, because they put him in a command job. So I got to the Air Force Honor Guard, and uh, because I was short and stout instead of short and skinny, I didn't go on firing party with body bearers, so I did a lot of carrying people around, and uh, that got me into this competitive shooting thing. You know, I did like five funerals a day, but I ended up doing this uh, competitive shooting team and so we did a lot of PT, and, and then I got stationed in Air Force Space Command in Colorado, and I, I did a lot more of that. And that, that really centered me more on that team kind of thing. Like, there was like nine of us, and we would live together every, you know, 24 hours a day for three or four months a year. And, uh, you know, it was weird, because after, after I retired a few years later, I kind of missed those bonds. You know, we went to war uh, with Iraq and Afghanistan, and all these people I was stationed with kind of went off and did their thing, and I got out and raised a family and, and uh, started doing what I do now. So anyway, um, 2002, I discovered printmaking. Started making uh, carbon images in wood, and it was really interesting to me. And uh, started working with this guy named Erwin Tam, who, whose dad is somewhat of a writer, I hear. And, uh, Somehow this collaboration took place, was born, where like this black and white way that I see the world was combined with this color that the, is the way that Irwin sees the world. And uh, you know, I've got a couple of jokes about that, like I'm the straight guy and he's the funky guy, or he brings the color and I bring, you know, all the dark lines, or you know, it's like a mullet, you know, business in the front and party in the back. You know, there's a whole bunch of ways to describe our relationship, but it really works well and it makes me extremely happy. So during the course of that collaboration, we started thinking about like how we can work with our community of people. And you know, what's evidenced in our show is the beginnings of that kind of collaboration. Many of these pieces of paper were handmade from people's clothing, you know, uniforms, uh, medical scrubs. You know, the ideas that are captured in there are not just the ideas that you see in the pictures, but you know, the lives and stories and personal narratives of the people who own those clothes, those things that we live in, those things that we experience our lives in. 
are cut up, turned into handmade paper, and uh, then distributed throughout the community. So I think that's really what this project's about. It's about community building through art making. You know, it's about taking these remnants from our lives and putting them back together in ways that add meaning to everybody's lives.